Hey guys, it's Corey. Happy New Year. Actually, it's it's not Happy New Year yet. We're still December 6th, but I know you're viewing this on January 4th, so I thought I'd go ahead and tell you Happy New Year. It's going to be an awesome year, a year of glory, a year of preparation, and I'm excited about it. So anyway, Happy New Year. Um, anyway, I wanted to keep talking to you about the fear of the Lord. We've been talking about this theme, and I want you to go with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 chapter 5, and I'm going to just talk with you about what's burning on my heart this season. I may share it uh, at our One Thing conference. Uh, you know, who knows? Um, I'm burning on this thing right now. So uh, it begins with a very uh, famous passage, but I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that it's the recovery of what we now possess in Christ that is going to produce a right response of fear. Before I get into this passage, something that I touched on the last podcast, I want to touch again is that one of the, the greatest way to break the fear of man and the man-pleasing spirit is by cultivating the fear of God. Many, we, uh, the greatest problem that we have in this hour is that many of our pulpits, many believers, there is such a fear of man, fear of the opinions of men, fear of not disrupting anybody's comfort zones, that we have fallen into a man-pleasing spirit that we're not even hearing from God. What happens, and that's why I love the place of prayer and the Word and of setting apart a life before Him. It's because it's in the place of prayer and the Word that we begin to get awareness of who we're talking to, which then begins to break the power of, of your influence and your opinion in my life. One of the greatest gifts and one of the greatest ways that I can be a benefit to this generation is by getting delivered from the opinions of this generation. My allegiance is to heaven. And when I hear what he's saying, that frees me to set others free and to be that. Most of us are so gripped by what others think. And I, I think that we need to go on the journey of cultivating the fear of God to set us free from the fear of man. I give you that. And, I, and Jesus says, he goes, don't fear him who can only kill your body. Fear him who can kill your body and your soul and cast it into hell. That's Jesus just went, wait, says it, says it just like it is. And that's what we need to be uh, doing. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We see this familiar verse, real famous passage, and it's this. Paul says to the Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Paul then begins to lay out what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. That God came to us in Christ, reconciled us to himself, and has now given us the ministry of reconciliation, of crying out to others to be reconciled to God. Well, I don't want to so much talk about that today. What I want to talk about is... Paul's, um, uh, uh, in the light of this glorious reality of what we've been given, he says this is the response, that we would not take the grace of God in vain, that we would not take the free gift of righteousness standing before God in blameless holiness, that we would not treat it as a light thing, that we wouldn't keep, uh, treat it as a common thing, but like I was saying in an earlier podcast, that we would jealously guard with the fear of the Lord what we've been given in Christ Jesus. Beloved, we are in a crisis in the body of Christ. We are in a crisis, and we are in a false grace message crisis. We are hearing a message of the grace of God that in essence allows people to live in their areas of compromise, lethargy, apathy, without any true heartfelt repentance and causing them to change their ways and being reconciled to God. This false grace message, in essence, says do whatever you want because, praise God, He's forgiven you and you're going to heaven. Beloved, that is not the grace of God message. Matter of fact, Titus chapter 2 says that the grace of God has appeared to all men. And this is what the grace of God does, verse 11. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, and it says that we should look for the blessed hope and coming of our great God and Savior. The grace of God actually produces fear. It produces a healthy fear that sanctifies your life. And Paul, he says, he says, we then, as workers together with him, 2 Corinthians 6, 1, plead with you. I mean, this is not light. I plead with you, do not take the grace of God in vain. Do not treat it lightly. Don't treat it as something common. Matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 6, he says, don't insult the spirit of grace. Don't insult the spirit of grace. Don't treat it as a common thing, but cling to it, cleave to it, and guard it jealously. Paul then begins to walk through it saying, guys, now is the day of salvation. Access the grace of God. Cling to Jesus. He says, we haven't gotten in your way. 
We lived as bond servants in your sight. He goes through everything that he went through saying, we haven't been in your way. He says, your problem is this. You are restricted by your own affections.